Hello, everybody. My name is Tony, also known as Tony Carvings, and I'm tuning in from Bulgaria to welcome you to the International Association of Woodcarvers. All right. Good afternoon. Welcome to the International Association of Woodcarvers. Uh, today is April the 20th, 2024, Saturday, a little bit after 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Appreciate you all taking time out to come in and join us as usual. Uh, today, we've got a special treat on our meeting. Uh, reminds me so much of why we started these meetings back in the beginning is one, to share carving with new carvers, uh, but also to make it international and bring in people that uh, um, maybe aren't as exposed to carving as other people are. Uh, today, we're going to have Tony on, and uh, he's coming to us from Bulgaria. Uh, Tony's told us that he's the only caricature carver that he knows of in the Bulgaria area, uh, say that three times. Um, there are architectural type carvers there, but no caricature carvers that he knows of. Uh, he's going to be talking a little bit about that in the meeting today, so we're excited to have him on. And again, the uh, the the wonders of uh, social media give us the opportunity to go out and see people's work that's uh, you know not right here in our backyard. And it was cool to run across Tony's work. Uh, he does a great job and look forward to having him come on and speak here in just a few minutes. Uh, I want to remind you all about some workshops or the workshop that's uh, coming up uh, on um, June the 1st. Uh, Dave Stetson's going to have another workshop on wood carving a five piece cowboy. Um, if you're interested in that class, make sure you contact Dave and get signed up. I know we've got a little time, uh, but there may be some materials and stuff that you need to get to get prepared for that class. I know he's taking uh, students now, so make sure you reach out to him and get signed up for that. Uh, remind you about Wood Carving Academy. Uh, there's a lot of old classes out there uh, and really some recent classes that have been recorded and put out there uh, where you can learn at your own pace. So if you haven't taken advantage of that, I encourage you to go out, check that out. It's woodcarvingacademy.com. Uh, you can uh, subscribe there one month, three months, or a year. Um, and uh, it's really probably the best um, value for wood carvers learning uh, out there. So make sure you go out and check that out. Uh, on our meetings, wanted to remind you also, uh, we're going to be off next week. Some of us are traveling down to the Charlotte Woodcarver Show, Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, that's the Charlotte Showcase of Wood Carvings. Uh, it's the 26th through the 28th. If you're in the region, uh, try to make the trip down. We were talking a little bit about that before the meeting started. It's a great show. You have opportunity to meet a lot of carvers, uh, see whittling competitions. They're going to have demonstrations. Uh, of course, put pieces in the competition. Uh, there's a good place to uh, to get tools and uh, wood, you know, pretty much everything for the wood carver. So uh, if you're in the area, make sure you try to come down and check that out. Um, I also remind you about the uh, CCA Carving the Rockies. We're still making plans for that. Uh, that's coming up in September on the 14th and 15th. You'll see the flyer right here. Um, there's classes out there the 16th or the 18th. So if you're interested in those, make sure you go out and sign up. I know we're getting limited as far as the number of seats that are available. There's only a handful left. So if you're thinking about uh, taking those classes from the CCA instructors, you need to go out uh, on the CCA website and check that out and get signed up there. Uh, but make plans to come out to Colorado Springs and uh, be with us out there. Uh, it's one of the most fun shows that I've ever been to. Uh, you'll get to meet all the CCA guys, come out and see some great carvings. It's the only show that I know of. Uh, that's solely dedicated to caricature carving. So uh, again, if you are interested in that and you want to come out, learn, have opportunity to uh, purchase carvings and uh, participate in that that whole weekend, definitely try to take advantage of that. Um, on our meetings, I've got a full schedule through May. Christine Hill is going to come up on May the 4th. Cal uh, York from KJ Carvings will be on May the 11th. Uh, Cody Bonham from Block and Knife. It's going to be on on uh, May the 18th, and uh, Race, uh, or I'm sorry, Reese from Woody Wood Spirits. It's going to be on on May the 25th. So, uh, no, after our break in, in uh, Charlotte next weekend, we've got four weeks um, that uh, we'll have presenters every weekend. So make sure you make plans to join us back here uh, on the 4th of uh, of May, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with the same number. Uh, before I turn it over to Tony. Uh, as we normally do, we're going to have Dave Stetson come on with his words of wisdom. And so, Dave, I'll go ahead and turn that over to you, and uh, we'll look forward to hearing what you have to share with us. 
Thanks, Blake. Um, going to share the five P's with you today. Um, it made so much sense when I first heard it. I thought, why am I not ever hearing of this before? And uh, I asked all the intelligent people I knew if they'd ever heard of it, and no one had. So I didn't feel quite as bad. But the five P's are not the number of trips that a Philly fan has to make to the bathroom to relieve himself. Um, the five P's stand for proper planning prevents poor performance. Now that that really kind of fits with a lot of things in life, but especially with carving. It's also, uh, it's also uh, been mentioned that it, that it's called proper prior planning prevents pitiful poor performance, but that would make it seven P's. Um, and there's, there's all sorts of, uh, P's, there's six P's of life and the five P's of success, but, uh, it's an anticipation of challenges. So proper planning allows you to, uh, foresee potential issues and prepare solutions in advance, reducing the likelihood of poor performance. So, uh, if you want to give that some thought, I've been thinking about it all week and it, uh, I don't know that it's improved my abilities or not, but it it gave me a chance to create a little dig for one of my friends. So um, we won't say who that is, but uh, Pennsylvania resident. So y'all have a great week and thanks for putting up with my word of wisdom. All right, Dave, thank you for that. Um, I may know who that, uh, Philly fan is also, so uh, we won't call any names, but uh, glad that uh, you shared that with us today. Again, on our meeting today, Tony coming to us from Bulgaria. Again, I've uh, shared some of his work out on social media. Hopefully you all have seen that and uh, look forward as much as I do to hearing from him. Uh, Tony, thanks for coming on. I know it's late in the evening there. I'll let you tell everybody what time it is, uh, but it just shows the sacrifice that you're making to come on and present with us. Uh, so I welcome you. Welcome to the International Association of Woodcarvers, and I'll go ahead and turn it over to you, my friend. Thank you, Blake. So it's 10 p.m. where I am right now, but it's not really an issue. So uh, hello, everyone. First of all, I'd like to tell I'm really, I'm truly grateful and honored to be here. So, yeah, my name is Tony Tanev. Uh, I'm also known as Tony Carvings on Etsy and uh, Instagram. I'm 25 years old, turning 26 in nine days, in nine days, actually. I'm from Bulgaria. Bulgaria is a wonderful little country in, the, in, in Eastern Europe. And I've, I've been a wood carver about about three and a half years. So I'm really gonna start from the beginning. Um, I've, I've always been really fond of, of nature and countryside where I spend all, almost, if not all my summers growing up. Uh, but I never considered myself really um, even something close to an artist. And I still don't really. So back in the summer of 2019, uh, I was 21 years old and I was in the, in the university studying for a civil engineer. So that was really chosen for me, from my family. I didn't like it at all. Um, but the thing is, as probably most of people this age, I was really, really lost. I didn't have the slightest interest in, in anything. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, so the thing is, yeah, I, I, was, I was really lost. So in the summer of 2019, I was at my grandparents. I was watching uh, YouTube on my phone. And I got out of nowhere recommending a video 
which was called the most fantastically simple yet satisfying car ring ever. And it really was. And when it, the video was by the linker. Um, so it was about little head ornaments like Santa's hillbillies or wizards and whatnot. Now I have, I don't really have an idea why, but it seemed so interesting and intriguing to me. So I clicked on it and I watched the whole thing. And the whole and the whole time I was like, wow, that's really amazing. It looks so easy. I can probably do it. I, well, I, I wasn't able to do it, of course, but uh, I was I really wanted to try. So I really felt a, a, a spark in me, something like that. Uh, it was it was really cool. It was it was amazing. So I was I continued watching more of his videos. I was hooked. I watched the beginner one, the, the the knives, everything, everything. I probably watched more, at least 20 videos. So I, I watched, yeah, I watched the, the knives and we wanted to, wanted to start carving immediately, but I didn't have anything close to a proper carving knife. I think uh, I got my a little pocket knife because that was the, the 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 shortest blade knife I could find, and I knew the shorter the better. That applying to to carving knives, of course. So um, I really wanted to start, but. I waited for the next day. I researched uh, which woods are, um, are best for carving. I found out that linden and uh, willow, because people said they are the softest. So I knew a willow next to next to our house by the by a river. So I went to see if there were any falling branches and whatnot. So I'm going there, middle of the day, scorching hot sun. And I found this giant branch, like three meters long. It was like this thick, uh, from the thickest part, and like this thick on the thinnest. And I was like, that's amazing. It's so much wood to carve. So, I started dragging it on the, on the dirt road to my house. It was really heavy. Starting in, in the in the this scorching summer, I was so determined to, to start carving. So I got it to my home. I got a saw. I cut a little piece. I took the the round parts off, and. Uh, I cut it in half because these little faces, you only need a half of the block. I sat on a table with my pocket knife and my phone. So, uh, turn the tutorial on. It was like 23 minutes. And I followed every step until I finally finished my first wood carving. And I got it right here, actually. This is my first wood carving ever, it was, looks so sad. Uh, it was, it took me two and a half hours, but I, I was really excited that I created something. And then what is, I, I, I wasn't really discouraged at actually, it was quite the opposite. I was thinking how much I can cut time the next, uh, how much uh, time can I cut the next time I try one. So the next day, I went to buy some more proper carving tools, but I didn't want to spend too much money because, like every new haul, you, you don't know how it, how many, much it's gonna last. You might quit it next week. So I searched for the cheapest. 
knives. And I got on probably AliExpress, you know, it's basic, um, low basic carving set, like three knives, a spoon knife and two, two little knives. And also got a little chisel gouge, cheap set, something. <laughs> but they were way better than the, the, the pocket knife. So I was feeling great. I tortured myself by carving one more thing before the knives, uh, the proper knives arrived. This little snowman that I got. It's my first snowman. It's cracked from the back. No one knows. Little snowman that really took a lot of work to make round with my little dough pocket knife. And the the knives actually arrived really quickly. So I started carving a lot of things from Doug's videos. And a couple of things of mine. Uh, I always you forgot to mention I watched his painting videos too. And I got some cheap paints, cheap as I can find. <laughs> they were they were pretty bad, but they, they got the job done. I also started few carvings that I have, I have failed. I didn't never finish or realize that they were stupid ideas. So I'm gonna show you a little of my first carvings that are left because almost every one of these I either gave away to friends and family or sold. So. The first, the first one in the snowman I, uh, I showed you, I made this little hillbilly, probably the, the, the second after the, the first one, for a little magnet, and it's on my fridge. I made a little, this little Santa that also got a magnet, and it's also on my fridge. <laughs> And the most thing I the, the thing I'm most proud of is this little, little ghost that I saw from from Doug's video. I don't remember how I made this thing, but it looks pretty legit for my like fifth carving, this little bag, and I put a little I don't know, pink cake in his hand. I don't, I remember what that was in his, but that was kind of improv. And th these were the only things I think I have left. So uh, I also made a singular spoon with the spoon knife with in the in the kit, and the spoon knife broke after I made <laughs> the, the finger spoon. They were really of the highest quality. So and actually, this spoon I gave it to my mom. She uses it. She really likes it. So after that, after the summer ended, my semester started and I stopped carving because it was university time. Woo. So after about a year, a little bit more, it was 2020, it was, it was the pandemic and we were only partly online we needed to still attend some classes and around that time i saw a colleague of mine who was draw who was drawing painting and uh, he made a an instagram page for his paintings and i thought to myself what if i made a little page to see just to put some of my old carvings that I have and see which page is going to have the bigger growth, I guess. And it was like, I was just going to leave it. So um, I started posting my, uh, my, uh, my first carvings. And I was actually surprised because I gained quite the numbers for, for a new account. I remember it felt pretty nice getting likes and follows for a person who doesn't really use social media at all. 
um, and on the stuff I created, it was it was awesome. So um, I remember thinking, well, I only have like five photos. What I'm what I'm going to upload next? Like I. <laughs> So my roommate, which is uh, also my best friend, he was actually fully online. So he went back to my to our uh, home city, and he was coming back really rarely. So I was having a lot of free time and a free days. Is so I went to a like Home Depot type store. And go and go a long piece of like plank wood, uh, and I was thinking it was basswood at the time, but it turned out to be some kind of pine wood, which is which was really bad. But still, from it, I cut I cut a couple of things, and I uploaded them. And people really liked them, surprisingly. So. Some of my friends said to me, like, why don't you try and sell them? And I remember I, I, I laughed at the thought, like, yeah, who would pay money for my badly made figurines? And I'm still a beginner. I, I'm doing th th these things for myself. But I really didn't stand to lose anything if I tried. So I was like, yeah, whatever. So I researched uh, the platforms and found that Etsy is uh, perfect for me because there were no monthly charges or anything. So I made a shop and listened to some of my best new ones. It was like three or to, I don't know, I remember. And I, I got absolutely no hopes or even a thought I would sell anything. After exactly one month, the un unthinkable happened. I sold two pieces in one night and two more the, the next day. And let me tell you that was probably the happiest I've been in all my life. I remember at the whole morning I was just I was just like dancing and singing like some scene from a from a movie. And I from that I just started carving because people really was buying were buying everything almost instantly too i got my first uh custom order that from a lady who who bought two or little ornaments and wanted wanted like eight more so i sold everything i made in in december in one month so after that amazing experience, uh, I made the really hard choice to leave university, which I wanted to do for a very long time, but I didn't know what to do if I did. I was really scared of what comes next. Some people might think this probably was a really stupid idea, but. I think that was the best, the, the right thing for me. And for the first time, I was 100% sure that I wanted to do this. And I love doing it. So I went back to my home city and started searching for a job, any job. I can work and carve at the same time. Um, I found a job a few months after I found a job as a in, in, in a bookstore, the bookkeeper. I don't know if it's called a bookkeeper, a bookstore. And I started working and I will continue to carve things.
and upload it to my sh my shop. A few months a few months after I started, um, I was making a lot of sales in my shop too. I at the end of, at the end of the year I I sold everything that I had again, which was oh amazing. And after about a year in the in the bookstore, I left because I gained uh, my shop started getting a little. I don't, I don't want to say big, of course, but you could say I got some people that I, what were buying all the time. So I decided that I want to just focus focus everything on just carving. So my family, which were really not happy with the idea when I left university, started showing me a little more support. <laughs> um, and then a few months after I left the, the Jordan bookstore, I met my wonderful girlfriend of now almost two years. And I really don't remember someone supporting me about anything as much as she supports me about my career as a woodcarver. And I'm really grateful for her. So fast forward to present day, I'm living only off my craft, which is honestly a dream come true and I'm really really grateful so that's really my origin story I guess if there are any questions before I continue hey Tony after the uh the Home Depot wood what what wood did you settle on as far as wood carving goes and where do you get it probably not can you hear me? I don't know if Blake is speaking on and I can really hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue. So talk about a little bit about my my process of uh, we're gonna take a little ride inside my mind and talk a little bit about how I think about stuff and how I do stuff about my carving. So since since I started carving for real, um, when I opened my page in my shop, the my thought process was you you only you gotta know the basics and, and of course that being Sharp, sharp, you can be too sharp, uh, get quality wood, um, you know all the basic cuts, wearing a glove, that's really important. Un un unless you're uh, like collecting scars, I guess. So, uh, and the rest of what you need is little imagination and lots of, lots of practice. So, the same practice makes perfect really applied with full force when talking about wood carving and of course any craft for that matter. But um, since I was very young, no, with a lot of things that I did, I never seeked any help or even I even shunned help because I wanted to do this thing, the task or the thing on, on my own. I wanted to find a way to do it, to learn, to analyze how things work, to have my mind wander and think out the possible ways to solve a problem or something. I, want, I wanted to earn the solution, I guess. Uh, and the thing I really dislike was someone presented me with the solution. So 
uh, for me, learning is the is way easier and long lasting if you go through the process of doing something yourself. I don't know, but um, yeah, that's my just my personal methods or um, psych philosophy, I guess. So that explanation is connected to my carving in a way that. Um, I wanted to do everything on my own since I since I learned learned all the basics without looking at anyone else. I stopped looking at tutorials and stuff um, because I wanted to do things and create a unique style that was recognizable from a mile away, and it probably helps. Um, because my backgrounds are the same from the other pictures. So, um, and, and and the other day, that's really the beauty of art. Every person different ideas uh, in different execution. So, of course, I look at pictures on Instagram or or Pinterest for ideas and inspiration. But I guess I look at a thing, for example, a swirly mustache, and I'm like, that's um, that's that's so cool. I wanna I can't wait to try on my own. So I've been learning all on my own. And there is something that really helps me enormously. Um, and that thing is that I'm my own biggest critic, so to speak. After my every carving, I go, yeah, next time I can do a little better job. Some things, uh, this can be improved. This and this, there's always something that be, can be improved, but only you... Your carvings, only you can see your imperfections because you have that image of how something should look in your in your head. Um, and that's not to say I don't like my carvings, of course. I'm proud of everything that I do because I give it my all at the time that I make them. I, I do my best when I, when I do them with my skill set at the time. So, but I always, I always strive for perfection, but the path of perfection is never ending. So I, 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 a quote from Leonardo da Vinci with, um, that really resonates with me, it goes something like the worst evil which can befall a Artist is at his work should appear good as in, in, in his all you know eyes, something like that. I, I was living with that thing unknowingly. So I have a shop, I might sell sell all my carvings, but um I really take my time with each one. I never, I never try to do as many as I can just to have a big amount so I can sell as many as I can. I, I try to do all of them unique. And that's not to say I'm, I'm the only one doing this, but. So do you have some recent. I put pieces? a lot of time in them. Do you have some recent pieces around, Tony? Skip corners and anything. Yeah. The, the wood, the carving, the painting, on the even the finish. All the stuff I make are really things I enjoy doing, like Santas. But Santas are actually my second favorite thing to carve. Um, I the most my, my, my most favorite thing is Halloween stuff. Oh. 
Sorry, we're we're letting Tony know, know that he may not be able that. to hear. I can't hear you at all. Oh, Can my bad, my bad, my bad. Are you good now? I'm, I'm, I I have a little. Like, uh, can you speak now so I can try? Can you hear us now? Yeah, I have a little portable speaker that just turned off. I'm oh. sorry. So, uh, the questions, Tony. Um, once you finish with the Home Depot wood that you bought, uh, tell us about where you source your wood from now and what you're using now. Oh, yeah, of course. So, um, um, my wood, I the first, like, two years, like, a year and a half, my uncle brought, uh, was bringing me wood from the capital when he was visiting, like, these big slabs of... Uh, basswood like meter and a half tall and like 20 centimeters uh wide and what we were cutting them down to little blocks but um i would i decided to stock up myself so i found a, a, a lumber mill in the mountains nearby that had basswood, and um, it's quite the it's quite ironic. My city is called the city of Linden, and there's no Linden around <laughs> in the clo any close proximity. And I got my best friend. We traveled there with his pickup truck, and uh, we filled it to the brim with a big two meter uh, long slabs of uh, basswood, which were like, like 15, 50, 50, 15 centimeters wide at about six and a half centimeters thick, I guess. Um, and uh, the people there were really nice. They let, they let us, they let me pick them one by one because that's really important when uh, you choosing wood for carving. So I got to pick up my slabs one by one from a lumber mill in the mountains. And uh, I got them now in my garage set up. I, I also bought a, I bought a bandsaw and I cut them, cut them to a little blocks like, like this. And I just start carving from, from this. And that's really about it. So why don't you show us some of your uh, recent stuff? Do you have any recent carvings that you've done? Yeah, of course. they're all around me. They're ready. Yeah. Talk, talk to us a little bit about those. Yes. Yeah, so I, I was, hmm, let me take a little something I forgot to take. I'm sorry. So I got two these two little pumpkins for Halloween that are left. A little, got a little cloak. This one, the whole idea is it's sitting on a stone and it's got a ripped, I don't know, cloak, I guess. And its uh, roots are protruding. I don't know, just thought of it. I got this. I got this little snowman that nobody likes. Sitting sad <laughs> for almost two years. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the color's a little, little bleak. I guess. So I started. Um, th this year, I wanted to finally try to make uh, faces, the, I could try to make ornaments. And I never done faces before. I've always been scared to do it because I might make them, them look creepy or something. <laughs> I think that's the most uh, scary part of faces. So I tried. On a little bad piece of wood. So 
that was my my first one that I tried to make. I don't know if you can see it. It's pretty bad. The second one, I tried a little, I don't know, expression, but everyone I showed them, it, they said it, it looks like it doesn't have an eye. It is poked out or something. So yeah, I, I took that to heart. And uh, after these two, and I thought, yeah, I'm ready. I'm, I'm about, I'm, I'm gonna do something for my shop. So I had to make this one, this guy. I don't know, pretty, pretty long face. I don't really, I don't know, I something is off <laughs> with him. I don't know what, but <laughs> Probably the small eyes, I don't know. The next one, which is, I uploaded on Instagram and I'm really proud of this one. But everyone said the eyes are a little creepy. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> they, might, I, they, might, I, they might are. I don't think it's kind of cute. I'm, I'm really proud of this one. Uh, I really did an amazing job <laughs> with the, the painting, actually. Uh, especially on the face, I, I managed to do, first for the first time, I managed to do a little red cheeks and uh, little rosy cheeks and, and nose. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but I'm really proud of this one. And uh, yep, no one has a bottom, so uh, <laughs> I don't know if people really like them. Probably need to need to work more on uh, on the expression or or the eyes. So uh, I got two a, a basic like basic Santa that I got the only Santa that I that I have. It's not sold. It's, it looks kind of bad on this lighting. Nothing special, I guess. I got, I got this, this leprechaun, which I'm really proud of uh, his mustache came in, and, and his hat turned out pretty, pretty nice. I started doing these random hats. So, Two, the mo two things left that are the most detailed carvings I have and I have done. This little guy, this little leprechaun holding a little tankard. So with this one, I my whole goal was I wanted to try and make the hand, the the hands, the the same in the same part of the whole in the the whole the same block because I only always always make them separate, and I think it turned out pretty pretty okay. It looks kind of natural, I, I think. Um, the the little cane and the the tankard is they are separate. I made them separately and attached them pretty, looks pretty, pretty okay. And my most detail, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Um, my most detail car de detailed carving ever that I did was this little pumpkin, I don't know what I call him, wizard. So that was a nightmare in the in the nicest way possible. So this was uh, the head and the hat, the and the hands are different pieces, but the everything else was the was from a single piece, single single block. And this thing, I don't know, it, it took so much time. 
I was I I found a little um a picture of a witch sitting over a cauldron and, and that was my reference. I wanted to make a pose like going like like this. And uh I I failed. I really failed dramatically. I made the hands too big. Uh the only thing I'm really proud of is the little staff that it holds. I think it's turned out little uh turned out pretty cool. I made I'm I'm really proud of the ball I did because it's really round. <laughs> and um the biggest nightmare were the hands, especially this hand holding the little eye. And these hands uh Oh wow, thank you, thank you. I hope my audio is not muted. Yeah, it's it's a little it's a little eye. I hope you can copy because you can see it. It's holding a little eye. Because on the picture I, I referenced, the witch was holding a mouse, and I was not doing that. So I, I decided what ingredients are in which cauldron. So I, I decided for an eye. And I, I is uh, separate too. So these hands, I took took pictures of my own hands doing, <laughs> doing these gestures from all angles, and I carved them. I don't know. It kind of looks, kind of looks okay, but maybe it's a little big for the whole thing. Uh, and the eye. I took uh, put a little holes and just slide it between the fingers with a little glue. I really hope this holds if anyone decides to purchase it at any time. I I'm not really sure how um, what am I going to do about the packing of this thing. So yeah, uh, the head is I also attached the head on the shoulders. But the most cool thing about this one is this little cauldron that I made that I made with it. The little bubbles, they turned out. I'm really proud of the bubbles. So the way I made them was I I, I cut little sticks from you know, with different sizes. And uh, carved little uh, half half spheres at the end, and I cut them with the with a, with a saw. Or a, I don't I don't remember what what I cut them with. And uh, I glued them. I glued them to the surface of the cauldron, and I I was thinking how should I make this, and um, so I can hide the the lines. Because it's not perfectly, you, you can't um, glue it perfectly so it's gonna have lines. So um, I decided I was gonna use the thickest paint possible, the thickest green paint. So I covered the the little edges, and so it looks like it's disgusting in there, really putrid, little like slime or sludge. Exactly what we will find in the which is cauldron, I guess. So uh, a little a little spill on the side, um, and I took and it turned pretty nice. I also add, add a little yellow, so I, you can't see the yellow, but I can, and it's pretty cool. So <laughs> so, but this this cauldron, I really dig the. The mistake, I guess, right? It's one of those little mistakes. I don't really have a choice. So you carve everything with the grain up. So I cut this one and it was with the grain sideways. So it was like this. The grain is up going like this. And I will never do that again ever because it <laughs> 
<laughs> that's a that's a that's a tip. Never do that ever. It's a nightmare. It's 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 really awful. You, you your whole world turns upside down. So um, yeah, that was, these are the carvings that I have with me now. So I I actually I don't know any other carvers. I never met anyone. Thank you. So Tony, do you want to talk a little bit about your painting technique and what uh, what kind of paint you use, and if you pre-treat the wood before you paint it? Yep, yep. So um, I don't uh, pre-treat the wood or anything. I just carve and start start painting. I don't know. I I bought a I bought a boiled linseed oil, and I had I had a bad experience with it because I messed things up really badly. Uh, so I carved. It was it was actually on um on my last big leprechaun. With I don't know if you guys remember, it was holding a little pipe. It had a little a little face. So I put I, I put linseed oil, boiled linseed oil over him after I painted him, uh, after I carved him. I let it sit for about two days. I don't know. I, I think that was plenty of time. So I painted him. And uh, after that, a, a day after, so three days passed. I apply, I usually apply a spray polymer finish, matte finish for all my carvings. So I spray them and the whole thing just was so sticky. I don't, I don't know, it was probably got inside the wood and did a, some kind of reaction with the linseed oil and it didn't dry. It was all sticky. It was it, it, a week past, two weeks past, it didn't dry. So uh, the thing I did was I had to scrape the top layer on the whole carving with a little, little napkins and little toothpicks. And uh, <laughs> it took like five or six hours to make it the how it should be. But I did it and uh, I actually sold it and the person really liked it. So <laughs> job, job well done. Um, but yeah, I use the paint, the paints I use are this, uh, a brand named Cadence. It's uh, a Turkish brand, probably because they're our neighbors. But it's uh, really an amazing. I really like them. They're very, they're very thick, and you have to use really a small amount when you when you water them down. So, and, and they got and, and they last for a long time. I mean, these are hundred and twenty milliliters. They they last they last for years. So four years, I never gotta replace color. So um, my advice really is uh, buy quality paints because it's an investment. So the way my painting, my painting techniques, I guess, is uh, I just start, I just start painting after I, after I finish. Um, and I do, I do all my colors, all my paints, I water down. Um, when I started, I, I used the solid colors, like a, well, most beginners probably, but they look kind of, kind of plastic at the end. I don't know. I don't really like them. So I water down every, everything. Uh, sometimes I layer, sometimes I dry brush at the end. It's really what I 
feel like it's best for a, for the current situation, I guess. Um, the my mo the, my biggest secret, I guess, my secret technique uh, about painting is after I'm done with everything, I get this unseeking paint, which when I got from the same brand, got this little thinking paint, and I mix it with water, probably three to one, free bean water, I really watered it down, and I apply it to the whole carving, and it just, I don't know, it makes it kind of more natural, it connects all the colors. I, I think it's, I don't know, just connects everything together, I think, and uh, makes the colors more, um, it's dark, it, dark, it darkens everything, of course, but uh, just a little bit, just a tiny bit. And um, really, I think it just makes the colors more uh, un uneven, which are more, which is a little more, I don't know, natural. Because nothing is like one color in this thing. Like, yeah. But um, that's like a, 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 really a, a signature of mine. Paint everything, blast it with a little uh, watered down and taking paint and <laughs> call it a day. Do you uh do you sell it after that or do you sell it at all? I wait like a day and seal it with the acrylic, this polymer little spray, and it's it got a little little uh little tiny shine, but it's not a glossy. I don't I don't really like glossy stuff. It's it got a little shine to it, but it's not. Too much, I think it's it's okay for, for me at least. I apply like three or four layers, and and that's it. The carving's done. The the whole process done. So so, what about your store, Tony? Do you ship all over the world, or uh, just in your country, or um, who who can get access to your stuff? I got, a, I got a little question I saw in, in the chat. Yeah, somebody's asking there, since you carve for a living, how many hours per day would you spend carving and painting? Well, the thing is, I'm kind of lazy. I don't know why. So uh, <laughs> I carve every... Um, it's really hard. I mean, I carve every day. But it, it's not a, a number for uh, everyone should, I don't know, follow or something. It's how you feel like for you, it's the best amount. Uh, no, if you do too much of something, even if you love it, I don't know, it might get a little tiresome, I guess. I, I don't know. I do probably like four hours a day which is really not that much but probably four or five hours a day and i make all my stuff i carve all my stuff and i paint on friday because i go visit my grandparents and i take pictures there <laughs> so um yeah like four or five hours a day i guess it's for me personally. I found that the uh, kind of like the golden number, if you will. But yeah, that's 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 it. Like four or five hours. And I was asking about your Etsy store. Do you sell across the world or just in your country or uh, can anybody oh, I get never access? sold nothing in my country. <laughs> Not to put my my people on blast here, but we are not really appreciative of handmade items. So 
we we probably are, but when we see the price, we go, ah, yeah, <laughs> it's way too much. I don't think I don't think uh, anyone would buy something here even of, on the uh, half the price. Wow. So it's not really great, but so I sh I sell all across the world, mainly in the U.S. Thank you, thank you for all my. <laughs> <laughs> US people, you guys really appreciate that stuff. I'm, I'm really, you guys really appreciate the hand, the hand, uh, the hand work. It's, it, it's, it's really wonderful. So yeah, I'm, I, I sell uh, across the world, and I got, I get a really amazing experience with my shop and the people I. Uh, talk with the, the people that got, uh, get my things and um, something that really warms my heart are the, are the, the yeah I like the car because it, for myself but when someone that bought something from me uh, gets, a, 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 gets me feedback being on a, a review or a message that really i think for me it's the it's, it's the best thing the people um sometimes just write me some beautiful stuff and i'm really really i'm, I'm really touched by it um and i think do i really deserve that praise <laughs> Because my stuff, I don't, I don't think I have nothing special, I think, but people really like them. And I'm really happy they, they do. Um, Tony, where did you learn uh, to speak such good English? <laughs> I'm, uh, I would say I'm, a, I'm like a parrot because I everything I, I listen and read and uh, I type. Is in English, and just from listening people, uh, listening people to people speak, I just speak. <laughs> that that's that's where I learned it from. Yes, yeah, cool, I guess, but eh. who, le who learns who learns uh, language in school? So, yeah, from from listening to everything. Everything I I almost I, to, to that point I'm almost like weirded out when I listen things in my own language. Because, yeah, I want to listen to English people. I want to listen to English. Yeah, from from ju just from uh, listening, just like a parrot, I guess. And thank you. I really, really appreciate the compliment. The the most thing, the, the thing I was most um, um, anxious about, I, I I I think was the the way I was gonna sound when I talk here. And turns uh, out there's nothing to me. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. So. Um, Are there any other questions in the chat? Anybody uh, have any questions for Tony? Tony, are you on, on Facebook too? Mm, sadly, no. Uh, the, the thing for me is I'm really bad at social media. I, I really suffer from being terrible. And that's really uh, kind of bad for me because... Uh, in, in this day and age, you need social media if you wanna, I don't, I don't sell stuff, and I'm really bad at, at, at making, I don't know, exposing myself. <laughs> um, I'm probably I, I'm I'm really an embarrassment for my uh, generation being that bad at social media, and uh, I start I gotta start listening to my girlfriend. Uh, her tips because um, I barely 
even engage in the single social media that I have being Instagram. I post like one thing a, a week or a month and, and I call it, yeah, I think that's pretty good. <laughs> I think that's enough, but um, I got to... Uh, I gotta learn that stuff. I, I don't. I, I don't know. I, I'm, should I make Facebook? <laughs> what do you guys think? I probably. I probably would. So it looks like there's somebody else from Bulgaria on with us. Do you see that one? Yeah, I just saw it. Gre greetings, my friend. So Happy you're here. So, um, but social media, uh, uh, my girlfriend always, to, uh, always tells me to upload more, uh, do a couple of uh, like videos. And it's, it, it's really hard to record. I don't know, if, because I've never done it probably, but um, I don't really know how people record the, the angle. It's like you're... If the angle is like you're watching your own hands. I don't know how people set up the set up the camera and stuff. Um, I tried uh, recording the one uh, leprechaun I I carved, but I never sit down and try and edit that video because it was little snippets, um, like um, twenty minutes. If you combine them, and I really don't want to bother, but <laughs> probably should do sometimes if you wanna wanna ex expose myself around the the social media sphere and uh, get a little more well well known, but because. Uh, no one's gonna find you if you're sitting in the corner with the little blanket over your head. <laughs> so um, yeah, I I guess really sh I really should spread out. Well, Tony and I I encourage you that uh, because you're the only caricature carver in Bulgaria, that you do spread out in your area, and that's a good way to be able to share carving uh, is to teach people. And uh, that may be another source of income for you over there is to actually um, make it available to other people. They may not even know that it's a it's a possibility and uh, show them where they can get the tools, where they can get the wood and branch out. Grow, grow caricature carving in Bulgaria. I really uh, had a thought about teaching, but. I don't know what I'm doing most of the time. So I don't know if I can teach anyone. Probably in the future, I would love to when I can explain stuff to people. I know everything just, I thought, I think in, in the moment, I, I, actually, I, I get a, a little block like this and uh, I stare at it for like a couple hours until something pops out. <laughs> and it's probably, yeah, I'm gonna do a Santa, but this one is gonna have a, a little belt or a little uh, uh, leaves in the front or something, a, a swirly mustache or a swirly beard. And uh, yeah, yeah, I just think of stuff at the, the, the moment, pretty, pretty much all, all the time. <laughs> yeah, I, I look at, I look at, uh, um, at little, uh, I look at um, pictures on Instagram and um, Pinterest for inspiration. There were there so many amazing stuff. Everyday new stuff from uh, amazing people that carve, and um, that's really an amazing thing for uh, ideas. So, yeah. Well, we are coming up on uh, about ten after four, so I know that's uh, what time. What time is it there, Tony? 
It's like 11, 10 p.m. 10 after 11, right. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and ask one more time if there's any other questions in the chat. Uh, I'm not seeing any. Um, I just want to say thank you again for coming on. Uh, for taking time out of your, your normal life to come in and present on here. Again, I encourage you, um, get involved in social media, take some classes uh, uh, online. It's a good way to learn, and uh, you should have access to Wood Carving Academy over there as well. So uh, go out and check that out. Uh, your work's fantastic, and I just, uh, just want to encourage you and uh, hope that you, uh, you continue on with it and, uh, and branch out and Hopefully uh, your enthusiasm will will be spread to other people and other carvers will get involved over there. So. I, re I really hope so. That's my that's my main thing. Yeah. Keeping so, this uh, craft alive and, and growing. There you go. That's right. That's what we're all about for sure. So uh, try to do that. Uh, just want to remind you all, we'll be off next Saturday. We're not going to have a meeting next Saturday. We'll come back in on May the 4th. Christine Hill will be coming in presenting with us um and uh, we'll have meetings all through may so make sure you uh, take time out on saturday afternoon and come out and join us uh remember that there's uh shows and things that's going on uh, if you have a show uh in your area try to go out and support those shows uh like tony just said the main thing is is to grow wood carving grow the community uh keep the craft going and uh hopefully we can do that by sharing it with other people so just want to say thank you again tony for coming on and presenting Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. This has been the International Association of Woodcarvers, where woodcarvers are helping woodcarvers. And we'll see you all uh, May the 4th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you all. <laughs> so, hey, Tony, did, uh, I don't know if Blake explained to you what we do with our intro. Um, we, uh, I'm going to spotlight you, but... We basically have the presenter um, welcome everybody. Uh, kind of introduce yourself. You say I'm Tony. You say you know say um, I don't even know. Do you have an Instagram handle? Yeah, I do. Tony, Tony Carrings. Okay, uh, we'll say you know. I don't know. Should I should I say my Instagram or just my name? I, it's up to I, you. I, I would say, say your Instagram handle, and that way that'll draw people to that. Yeah. Okay. Because we're here to promote you, and if that's a way that people can connect with you. Um, we, we're here to promote the carver. And so if they can see that and uh, see your work more and follow you more, it'll be a good yeah, thing. Understand. So just say, you know, I'm Tony with Tony's Wood Carving. Um, I just want to welcome you to the International Association of Wood Carvers. It's a it's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, and if you can... mess it up, then there'll be bloopers at the end. So that's good. Exactly. We, 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 need, many, <laughs> we, we can do as many takes as we need to. Hey. Hey, let me tell Dave this. The other day when I was talking to Tony, Tony said, I hope that there are bloopers. He said, I can't wait to see what we do. With bloopers. <laughs> yeah. So he, he actually watches to the end so that he can see our bloopers on our meetings. Oh, I always watch to the end. See? Yeah. That's, what, that's what I'm talking about. Man, you know <laughs> what? We'll just make sure we get a few bloopers in here some way. <laughs> we'll figure it out. I don't know. Uh, Blake might tell a joke. Tony, if you know uh, any jokes. I, I don't know any jokes. I you know I don't know. But anyway, okay. which, when should we start? Oh, we're started already. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. Um, I'll give you a, I'll give you a countdown. As I said, if you get partially into it and you if you want to practice a few times, go ahead and practice. But I'm I'll take practice. practice. Huh? I, I really doubt I'm going to nail it in the first try. Well, you know what? Let's just go with it, and I'll just go until you're done. When you feel comfortable with it, we'll stop. Okay. So you want it. He's a pro. Damn. <laughs> Damn. That's a That's one and done, I mean. man. You're supposed to screw it up. Oh, wait, I gotta hit record. Oh, let me let me record this. Time. I'm really suffering from success. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was good. That was fantastic. That was a great job, Tony. Man. That was. Good. I don't know if I can make it any better. Actually. <laughs> no, you're good, man. We're we're gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and.